Hey everyone, I'm here in Nashville with some good friends, Richard Smith, David Greer, Isaac Eicher. We're going to play some songs for you and talk a little bit about music. Let's do it. Nine Pound Hammer? Yeah. Oh yeah, love it. Who's kicking it off? I'll do it. Isaac. Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah, lead us in, man. One, two, Some of that Nashville music to Dennis right there. There we go. Thank this you. This is your first trip here, right? It's my first trip in sorry, Nashville. Sorry, I'm not interviewing you. You're, yeah, you're but you interviewing get to us. Me. Well, I'm hey, sorry. It's yeah. It's good. No, no, I'll you're jump right. Jump straight in there. <laughs> and uh, I know it's the first time that I've met you, but I've, I've known about you for so long. You know, I, I came for the music and I stayed for the political posts on Facebook. Oh no, forget about those. I don't, <laughs> I don't do it. I'm out of that business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for organizing this for me to meet some of these great musicians here. And I guess I want to talk about Nashville and the effect on the its effect on the music community here. So starting with David, who comes from a bluegrass background, um, can you tell us um, 
in your style of music, how important was, is it, was it for you to be living here? Well, all the people that invented this music were living here when I moved here back in the mid-80s. I think it was 85, maybe 84, 85. Earl Scruggs, Bill Monroe, Vassar Clements, uh, Benny Martin, Jimmy Martin. They were all around. And uh, actually, I knew people who would have them over to pick. And you could see them and talk to them and learn from them. And just to see what it was that made them tick, that maybe informed their playing somehow, their personalities, that maybe sometimes you don't get from a record. And, you know, you listen to these records your whole life, and you think, oh, my gosh, these guys are like gods. And they are, but they're just like people, too. <laughs> well, they are people. For There's sure. so much like people, they are people. <laughs> and uh, so that was what brought me here. And I knew a couple people here. And so that kind of got my foot in the door to begin with. And it's really beautiful. You share what you've learned with your friends and they share what they've learned. So you learn twice as fast or exponentially. Amazing. And Richard, you're more from the Chet Atkins background. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, some, I'm... Some of the question... Yeah, my, I'm, I, you know, my main gig is my solo guitar playing. So, you know, playing with a playing with ensembles is uh, something I do once in a while. I'd love to do more of it. Um, it's funny, you know, Dave's talking about the pe the people he listened to, his big heroes, and growing up and getting to meet them and learn from them. I know you're coming from a gypsy jazz background. Jack, nobody met Django. <laughs> it's like he was that was so long ago that no one around today met him so he's like this this um godlike ghostly figure from the past he was in black and white yeah you know it's like all the pigeons are in black and white so he's like this guy that didn't even really exist there's all this um you know uh, mystique around him For so sure. uh that doesn't happen so much in the gypsy jazz well i don't know how many people are still alive that that met django there's probably a few probably but, a few, but, yeah. but but not uh not that many but yeah for me i came here because um I knew it was a great community of all kinds of musicians, whether it be country guys or bluegrass guys or western swing or jazz guys. Or, you know, I, I grew up on the whole Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed thing. That's kind of what I studied as a kid. So, um, yeah, I figured this was the place to come and meet other musicians and uh, and hang. And you know, got this studio happening. It's just kind of just given me the freedom to be. Um, creative in here even if i'm not part of it it's good to be here while other people are creating you know everyone seeing all the ideas flowing and, and people learning from each other and uh yeah it's just a really you know is music city there's there's so much that happens here it's just such a great community as many of you who watch my videos know i have an online music school and we just recorded a lesson with isaac so if you want to know more about isaac maybe you should buy his lessons when they come out <laughs> today we're going to focus on our good friends on this side and isaac's sure. going to be playing music with us but he has an interesting story too so you should check out those lessons. i want to hear the story i want to hear <laughs> all right let's hear a little bit about you from tulsa oklahoma tell us about your dad real quick and everything yeah for yeah. sure and i'll <laughs> say it's an honor to be you know here sitting with you guys yeah i'm from oklahoma uh, my dad played country music for a long time um, you know, among uh, with other styles too, but he played with Roy Clark for 15 years, and he lived here for a period. But it was always coming to Nashville. And when I grew up and was listening to you know all these records, acoustic music from the United States, you know, bluegrass and just American, you know, all those like fiddle music. I mean, so much of it came from Nashville. So in my eyes, I mean, it's my whole life, I've known about Nashville being, you know, one of the most important music cities in the world. Right. Uh, so you know, when I was I graduated college and I was looking for a place to relocate or you know just to try to be part of the scene so I came out here and I've been happy you know I just really started a, a life here with my you know met my wife here and but worked with lots of people there's so many musicians here how could you not be happy it's it's amazing yeah obviously Nashville is one of the capitals for music in the world but they're all they're named known for as you said bluegrass country music but I Besides from that, are there other styles that informed your playing when you moved to Nashville? Like not, the Western swing or jazz or anything not like that? Not when I moved to Nashville, but before that. I mean, as a teenager, I had a Telecaster, so I tried to learn that language. I, I learned that I don't like the sound of what I did 
<laughs> what I had learned on acoustic guitar on a Telecaster. So I had to learn a new vocabulary, which, you know, I studied Don Rich and Roy Nichols and Albert Lee and Clarence White and Hamus Garrett. And oh, yeah. That guy. A bunch yeah. of different folks. Albert Lee, did I say him? Oh, yeah. Um, the Tele players to, to learn how to speak that language. And uh, it all grew. Nashville has, it's a melting pot. There's not just country yeah. and bluegrass players here. I heard that the guy that plays with Buddy Guy lives here, the bass player, or dead. There's a bunch of different styles of, of music. That There's world-class jazz players here. Sure. There's Jack Pearson, who's a rock, yeah. jazz, amazing. All around. Yeah. All around. Yeah undeniably killer guitar player that lives here that maybe you might not know of, but by golly, you should check him out. There's a lot of players like that. You know, it's not just Bill Monroe or Chet Atkins. There's right. a lot of people Push you on. may not have heard that are wonderful, and that's been a an amazing thing to meet those people. And... There's always an influx of new people moving here that, you know, who stick it out and who are great. And you get to learn from them or see them and, and become friends with them. You have something in common, music. And so that's what Nashville is to me. It's just like-mindedness, people that are really into their instrument and wanting to make better music. How can I do this better? Whereas if you lived in Akron, Ohio, and you went to a jam at the pizza parlor, you might find some old guy with a bull back mandolin and somebody with a kazoo, <laughs> yeah, somebody right. with an auto harp with half the strings off and not even tuned properly. Here, there's world-class jam sessions here. You know, a yeah. friend might call you up, hey, we're having a pick and Vince Gill's going to be here. I went to... Ronnie McCurry, who's a world-class mandolin player, had a party at his house one time that I was invited to a picking party. You might call it a jam, jam yeah. session. I always called it a picking yeah. party. And right next to me was John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin and Vince Gills across and Jack Pearson. And there's Dwayne Eddy was there. Yeah, Where's that going to happen? anywhere yeah. but here in Nashville I was just like pinching myself the whole time that's what happens in Nashville that doesn't happen anywhere else and yeah, how do you feel about that Richard the same question I would yeah I, I it's pretty much verbatim yeah it's uh, the kind of jams and that that's one example of it and it could be a whole bunch of other people um, and these jams they'll happen sometimes at people's houses they'll happen there's public jams that you can go to uh, there's bluegrass jams. There's, I guess there's blue, um, blues jams. There's um, western, you know, western swing jams and just general um, jam nights that happen. And yeah, they happen all the time. I guess I'm out of the loop now. I'm on the road so much that I don't even know who's having these jams yeah. these days. But I certainly went to a lot in my first days of coming to Nashville. I need to do it some more. I need to have one right here in the studio. That's what we're doing now. That's what right? we're doing right now. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, sure. And David, you were talking about how you had to learn another language when you were switching to just another style of, of guitar. And one thing, you know, I come from a Django Reinhardt background. People are mm -hmm. asking me, what are the skills? What are the things? But I say, okay, those are fun to know, but it's far more important to know the community and to know the language of that style. So I guess my question is, uh, how much of, quote-unquote, the academic side of, you know, learning your scales and arpeggios comes into your playing for whatever style you're, you're playing, or how much, it, what's the other percentage, you know, the community thing? Well, uh, you're a teacher, and you're not going to like this. <laughs> oh, trust me, I might like it. <laughs> is my father played the banjo, so he wasn't a real musician, but he hung around him. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but uh, so I didn't learn scales or modes or any of that. I swear if you held a gun up to my head and said, play me a diminished scale or I'm going to blow your brains out, I'd just you. close my eyes and say, go ahead, <laughs> shoot. Because it's, I, dad didn't play scales around the house on the banjo. That should be easy to believe. And I had never seen anybody get paid 
to play scales, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I knew Dad got calls to play at this club or this club or, hey, we're getting together next Saturday. Are you available? He'd check his schedule. Yes, I am. Let's play. And they would. And so I knew if learning s songs could eventually, if I got good enough, that I would be able to maybe play like he did in different places. People might call me because I knew these songs and we could all play those common songs together. Um, also, I always sort of thought everything I needed to know was already in those songs. Yeah. So if I learned those songs correctly or properly or as best I could, that that would, like I remember learning, there's a song called Gold Rush and it had a hammer on that I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, I was a kid. And so then you take that and say, well, can I use that in another song? Yes, you can. Can I do it on another string? What about in this key? And come to find out you can put it anywhere. You know, anywhere you could think of. So that's what led me to believe, well, if I learn this one technique, and then, you know, where does that lead me? How can I apply yeah. that somewhere else? And that's how I did it. And I didn't learn academically. I didn't have well, books. I think all that's the academic stuff can be fun, but actually a lot of teachers hate me for saying the same thing as you do. So, <laughs> And what I want to say something before we started recording, you were asking us about chords and what's you know, impressed me was how fast you learned the songs we were teaching you, the jazz songs, because you're not coming from a jazz background. Well, I've but, heard some of those But before, even then, yeah. we were telling, just showing you just once, boom, boom, you got them. So I think that's this whole, knowing, knowing the style thing is quite important. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I, when I first started learning, I was learning solos as if they were classical guitar pieces right the way through the same, you know, play it the same way each time. When I started improvising, I guess... I was listening to a little bit of Doc Watson and Albert Lee, and I was listening to Django and learning some of those solos. And I'm thinking, okay, this phrase here, how can I fit that into another song? Now let me play it in another key. How does it work? How do I know when it's coming up? So just little phrases, they're like words or sentences. Um, and then you play with those and you make them your own or, and play with them. And I, you know, mm. I learned s scales, to a, you know, I'll know my major and minor scales, but it, it's um, how well do you know? I kind of find myself um, thinking in terms of positions, um, thinking in terms of chord positions, the caged system, for example. You know what the ca everyone's familiar with the caged system? I hope so. If I, I hope so. If up. not, <laughs> C A G E D, and you do that. Am I in tune even? C there will be the A because yeah. it's moved up. So basically it's all these shapes and here's your capo. So he'll, this would be a C chord. You move that down. So C, A, G, E, D. And that's all that is. That is. So I'm yeah. thinking of that, that, that lick there. I'm thinking in that. It, it, there's the, the E of the cage system. So that gets moved up. It's not like a piano where you have to learn it differently. You can move that all up. The fretboard works all the way up. And that's how I think in, in terms of where am I. But it's how you glue the things together. Yeah. That's the tough uh, For sure. Yeah, that's the tough thing. I know I'm out of tune here, guys. Sorry, I better beautiful. tune up. I love I it can, when it's out of tune. And one sec. <laughs> There, so you can edit. <laughs> I'll turn up. Okay. okay. There's your edit point. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, you were mentioning about these world-class jam sessions with world-class musicians. So the standard must be very, very high in Nashville. And can you talk about that? How that, um, for someone who just moved to Nashville, what are the expectations as a musician? And when you go to these sessions, does that lead to other professional opportunities? Well, there's jam sessions at every level. There's beginner jam sessions that happen all in different people's places. There's more intermediate jams. It's just wherever you're at and uh, who your friends are, you know, and, um, and what they think of your playing or, or is you as a hang. Often, it's how good a hang are you. You know, you could be <laughs> the best musician, but if people don't like you, you don't get a call. And um, 
It's true from my point of view. That's why I play solo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, and if you fit in and you don't rock the boat and you're not mean or we'll stop there. Um, <laughs> then, you know, there you are. And it's just like anywhere else. It's just like playing kickball at recess at school. You know, if you're the goober, nobody wants to pick you. But if you're, if you get along and you do your job, then you get picked before the last guy. <laughs> it, isn't it sort of like that? It's, it's, yeah, Does that the, make sense? Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of how I look oh, at it. What, what, about you, what are your thoughts on that, Richard? Well, yeah, I mean, I, that's, you play as well as you can for yourself, I think. I mean, no one's thinking about, let me get better so I can get work. Or maybe there's a part of it, but really... If if you're in if you're getting into music because you want to work, you're in the wrong business. You, you know you've got to be a musician because you love it and you want to play better for you. Yeah. And if you get work along the way, that's great. But yeah, just oh, I should get better at this so that they hire me. I think you're already on the wrong on the track. You got to love it and, and want it to be right for you. Um, and uh, but yeah, try and get on with people. I mean, yeah. It's, I was talking to my buddy Aaron Till, great fiddle player yesterday. He said he's, he's seen people commit um, career suicide before because they're, you know, they say the wrong thing or something. No one's going to get, no one's going to hire you. So yeah, you you want, I mean, you want to have a good time with everybody. That's uh, for sure. Yeah, and you want it to be as good as you can. So I guess there's that balance. You want to hire good players that are a good hang and they want the same thing so yeah it's a mutual thing Richard mm -hmm. you and I had the advantage of starting when we were pretty young yeah and yeah. a child like mine and a child's curiosity plays into what we do a lot you yeah. know what happens if you put your finger here <laughs> you yeah know, what's yeah. this going to sound like can I do this here what happens if I do this or is this going to sound cool and it's just like walking in the woods. You don't have a plan. Right. You're just looking walking around. and seeing what you find. Right. Oh, look at that stone. Isn't that cool? Or this, look at that limb. It's all, that's neat. And just whatever. I mean, you know the melody. Right. But then you got this, this way of getting through it, which isn't really work. It's fun. It's experimenting. It's, yeah. it's an it, adventure, sort of. It doesn't feel like work. Right. But, oh, it's like you have to have it. And the yeah. whole time you're learning. Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty. I, I tell people who I teach not to read books or not to read tablature because that'll get you from point A to point B, the beginning to the end, if it's written correctly, just perfectly if you do that. But if you learn by ear, you might do something that's a mistake but might sound pretty cool to your ear. And then you'd have never found that had you done the tablature so yeah i think ear training is ear training as uh, as opposed to looking at what someone does and immediately saying where's the tab the best way to do it is to say let me learn it and to, to somebody who's never done that before they don't know what's happening they wouldn't know where to start and my advice to them would be start with the first note work out that first note nail that first note then nail the second note and that's it and it sounds tedious but it gets faster as you do it Definitely. but that is it there is no easy way of oh well let me just save you some time here's what you do it's no no that's what that is what you do how you many times have i heard what's the secret yeah, so the, yeah. the secret's practice that's the secret no really tell me what's the secret yeah. it's practice no, but there's, what's the secret? I said, never mind, you know. Uh. Yeah, I, mean, I, I had a guy come up to me the other day. He said, oh, man, I, I just want to get to, to, you know, close to this standard. So I've played off and on for about 30 years. I said, stop right there, off and on. There's your problem right there. you you got to, it has to be an obsession somewhat, I think. It's, <laughs> it's just, you have to love it. Uh, yeah. This guy said, how do I get, you know, how do I get to the next level? I said, well, do you have a job? He goes, yeah. So well, quit your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, pretty soon yeah. you're going to run out of money and you'll have to get good. <laughs> right. Or you won't. And that'll be that that'll let you know right there. Right. People yeah. aren't willing to do that. I moved here with eight hundred dollars. 
no. which looking back is really nothing now. I mean, it was more then, but it makes it, you work. Yeah, it makes you pick up the phone. It makes you pick up the axe and just get out there and do it. You have to trust in yourself at some point, knowing that okay, I did spend a lot of time at this. I think I'm good compared to some of the records I've heard. I think I could do that, and I'm going to take a chance. Right. And it, we've all moved here from elsewhere. Nashville yeah. is is a you know everybody gravitates to it. So that's part of the effect though. It's the standard is so high that you have to really stand well. You have to put in some work. You have to love it so much that you're going to do it for yourself. You want yeah. to fit in. Yeah. And I mean cuz if you do get the call and you can't then you may not get another call. There we go. You know yeah. which you know helps your bank account. <laughs> but, yeah, ultimately, you want to feel good about what you do. And so you want to practice so you can feel good about what you do. Yeah. And you want to be proud of it and show people, look, look, this song I wrote, or look how these two notes go together, or whatever it is yeah. you're proud of. Oh, well, I'm really, day. yeah, I'm really happy we did this interview. And uh, thank you so much for being here with, with me. Because yeah. it's my first time here. And I, I do want to come back next year again, meet more people. And Let's do it. Do this. And, uh, That'd be great. Should we play like one more song? Is there anything you want to say to audience or something? Nothing? Nope. Eat beans. Eat be beans. Dennis, thank you. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah. Uh, sorry well, about that. Just sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. One last tune. What should we play? Is it Lady Be Good? Gypsy Jazz or Jazz or Swing, whatever. Lady Be uh, Good. Lady Be Good was just, yes. Yeah. Do Lady Be Good. More, a little bit more up tempo, maybe?
Thanks, guys. Thank you, yeah. Dennis. A lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Sounded great, Isaac. Thank you. It's okay? Yeah, man.